Hey, what's up? Lightbolt Joe here. Today we are going to discuss the 2020 Disney Channel original movie, Zombies 2. So this stars Neil Mannheim, Meg Donnelly, a bunch of other people are in this. This is the follow-up to 2018 Zombies, the sequel. Then we have this as the second installment to 2022's Zombies 3. Zombies are great, right? The, the, the films are cute. They're wonderful. Um, again, I wish there was more music in this one, as I said for the first re review that we talked about for the, within the first film. Great plot point, great backstory. It's just, it's missing some music, right? And the music in this sequel is great. It's just, we want some more music, right? What happens next? What, 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 what other filler music is there between one scene to the next? If it was a, if it, just like the first one, if it was not a musical, it would still be great. It's gr still great as a musical. It's just missing some songs. We need some more songs for it to be a complete musical. I don't know. I, again, that was my only, my only problem with these films is that there's not enough music in the musicals. That's it. It's all I got. So now, the plot of this is interesting because we get further backstory on the town. We get further backstory because now there's werewolves involved in Seabrook and Zombie Town and Seabrook are now co cohabitating, right? Integration has happened. Everybody's welcome. But what happens when the werewolves of the mountains of Seabrook start to trickle into town, right? What's happening with that? And why are they trickling into town? Why are they trying to join the school? Why are all these teenage werewolves trying to join Seabrook High School in more integration aspects? While this is happening, there's planning for the prawn going on because the shrimp is the mascot, so they're keeping that in theme. So prawn is in regards to prom. Very cute. Very kitschy. Love it. Love the wordplay. So the further backstory we're provided is that uh, there was this... Back in the day when Seabrook was first settled by settlers, right? Because that's what the Caucasians did in, in the States. Uh, they claimed land as their own. And so the very first settlers, when they arrived to Seabrook, were being uh, attacked and harassed by these werewolves wearing these moonstone gems. And then it was discovered that the power source of these gems was up in the hill, up in the mountain. And they realized that this gigantic moonstone was releasing a ton of energy. And the way to prevent the werewolves from attacking them, it was if they... Uh, could hide away the moonstone and then harness its power as energy. So the energy source that's used for the town of Seabrook is from this moonstone that they just hid in this power plant all these years. That energy is what mixed with that lime soda spill inadvertently creating that green fog, which then decimated half of Seabrook, causing half those individuals to turn into zombies. So it's because of this moonstone that we have werewolves in Seabrook and that we have zombies in Seabrook. Very smart to throw this additional backstory in. Very smart. I'm very curious how additional potential backstory goes into the third film because we leave off on such a cliffhanger leading towards aliens and we know that aliens are a big concept of uh, the third film's plot points, especially with Addison's character. And this was very interesting with Addison's character. She has that white hair. She's never fit in. Um, she's always tried to fit in her. She was always raised to be that cheerleader, to be that cheer captain. But she never found the pack, quote unquote. So then within the mythology folklore of these werewolves, that this white haired alpha is going to save them, thinking that she might be that white haired alpha. Um, she is devastated when she finds out that she's not a werewolf, that she still doesn't know who her pack is, leading again into the third film. So there she's having that existential crisis mixed in with high school stuff, mixed in with integration stuff again. Uh, racial discrepancies is brought up again. Monsters versus non-monsters. Monsters versus humans. Um, but again, how can we cohabitate? How can we help each other for a better tomorrow? We, not me. And it's again, we, not me. So finding the moonstone after the demolition of the power plant, moving the moonstone to the wolf's cave, everybody working together, saving everybody. Um, the zombies learning that they can control their urges even without the Z-bands. Very neat experimenting with that. Eliza's got a lot more time going on. Bozo, Bonzo is speaking his zombies constantly. It's just, it's, it's a great continuation. It's a great next chapter. So I'm very excited to see the third chapter, the last installment in the Zombies trilogy, the Zombies franchise. It's cute. It's a Disney Channel original movie. The decoms that they are, 
you know, there's there's a lot of substance to these, but sometimes decoms don't have to have substance. Sometimes they could just be fluff, and that's fine. But these have equal parts spooky, equal parts cutesy, and equal parts real. They talk about real stuff. Integration, post-racial society, we not me. It's all there. It's wonderful. Standing up for yourself. What protest can we do here? What protest can we do there? Very wonderfully done in regards to showing kids that you're supposed to stand up for yourself, showing all individuals who watch this that you're supposed to stand up for yourself. And you're supposed to stand up for those who are not seated at the table. If you have a seat at the table, it's your responsibility as a, hum as a person in a seat to look around and see who's not at the table. How do you make room? How do you bring a chair in? How do you give them a plate? It's your responsibility. If you are privileged enough to sit at the table, how can you help those not yet at the table? Everybody deserves a plate. So it's your responsibility as having a seat at the table to help somebody get that plate, to get that seat. And that's what they talk about in this. Not with those exact words, but it's very, it's very wonderfully woven into it. Love it. Absolutely love it. Amazing franchise. I'm very excited for the third, bringing in Matt Cornett as a as an extraterrestrial, bringing in this alien showdown between humans, zombies, werewolves, and aliens. Oh, it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be wonderful. It reminds me a lot of Monster High, which is also neat because we have different monsters now within the high school. Wonderful combo of everybody. Uh, it's going to be a great, great end of a trilogy. I already know it. I already know it. Wish there was more merchandise. I already know it. On to the next review. Which mahalo.